We are headed to pick up the RX-7. Don't look at my lawn, because it's terrible. So it has been a minute since I posted a video up. Uh, today, I had the pleasure of going and picking up the RX-7 from Hargett Automotive and Performance. They finished up the tin work, fuel cell mounting, a bunch of cool stuff on the rear end of the RX-7 and the body of the RX-7. And I am so stoked with how it came out. It's insane. Also, shout out to Hal Dynasty. Let me borrow his trailer. Mine, well, let me just walk over here. Don't worry about my lawn, okay? That's fine, that's no big deal. But you see where my trailer is, right? Okay, no big deal. Backed the truck down yesterday, it had rained. I couldn't tell. I didn't quite get the trailer out. I did rut up my yard pretty good though. All the way down. But I got it out, so that's cool. I also scooped up a new tow pig. I had a, a gas 5.3 truck for a while. And I found this on Facebook, a guy named Jaguar. Super, super nice dude. Awesome name. He listed this, it's a 2015 LML Duramax, obviously. Um, Tone with the white truck was just super cumbersome. Don't mind the dirt, it's fine. But Tone with the, with the gas truck was cumbersome. So I stepped back into the diesel and signed my life away on another loan. So what I did was, or if you haven't seen, what we did was a uh, ladder bar set up, a ladder bar 8.8 in the ass end of the car. And we got the rear end set in place, cross member built, uh, forward ladder bar mounts all done, but a lot of the finish work wasn't done. So again, fuel cell mounting, trans cooler mounting, uh, flat bottoming the rear, the, uh, rear section of the hatch, um, basically putting a firewall in place between me and the fuel cell, and then where the rear buckets are factory, covering all that stuff up. And I had an image in my mind of what, what would happen here, and they pretty much went a million times farther than I would have expected, and it came out awesome. Ooh. Ah. Open sesame. Gosh, I missed it. Oh, I missed this old girl. It's dirty. All right, I'll pull it in so you can see it. Well, I'm not gonna pull it in. I'm gonna carefully hope that I can push it in. This is so sketchy. I hate this driveway so much. Before I jump in and show you what they've done, I wanna show you what we had. And this was, it fit the bill, it did the job, but it wasn't safe and it wasn't uh, pretty, for lack of better terms. This is what I had in the back end of my car last season. This is what I went sevens with. And it, you can tell that a couple things stand out. Number one is the top of the fuel cell comes through the floor. So if I were in a wreck and that gets ruptured, I have all that fuel inside the cabin. It's not safe. It's stupid to run a car like that. I'm a stupid person. So be it. So we had just a flat piece of aluminum that we got. We cut it out to fit this giant ass fuel cell. And this fuel cell, this is on me. I'm the one that like provided the images for what I wanted. I, I just drew it out and it was made, it was made perfectly. It's sick, but it's just too big. And we had to make do with what we had. So again, this did the job, but it's huge, it's heavy, and it's just not very pretty. So the first thing on my list was I need the rear trunk. I need the fuel cell mounted, I need the trans cooler mounted, and I need the rear of the trunk flat bottomed, and I need to be separate from the fuel cell. I need the fuel cell outside of the cabin. That was the first thing I needed knocked out. First thing on the agenda was to add a fuel cell hatch door and create a firewall between myself and the cell. So this is the floor pan of the rear trunk area that is now a firewall for me. They also mounted the nitrous bottle and they dimple dyed and made a cool design in the floor pan instead of just leaving it a flat piece of metal. It looks sick. This is underneath. You can see the fuel cell is boxed in, all the tubing that was bent and made to mount the trans cooler, the transmission cooler fan, the fuel pump itself, and the fuel cell. Everything came out absolutely killer. More overall realistic view of everything. Again, that design work is something that I didn't consider, I didn't ask for, I, I didn't even request any of it. And the first update picture I got was how this was coming out. It's insane. Before, you see how they obviously welded everything in. Before that 
sheet I had back here was just resting on some 90 degree angle and uh, was not the best option in the world, but it worked for what we had. And now we are complete with a welded in solid structure for the floor pan in the trunk. And again, that's this, <laughs> I could just sit here and mess with this all day. My favorite part. All right, the next pain point that I had with the car, and this is something I never really talked about. Um, this is my parachute mount from before. It is a bolt into place in the factory or a crash bar. It, it did its job. The problem that I had was on my chassis, I only had one bolt on each side that was usable. So I'm slowing the car down at 175 miles an hour with one bolt holding my parachute in on each side. So um, I, I left it on the car, I brought it with, I asked them if they could weld it in place and they went a little bit farther than that and made it a lot a bit nicer. So they tied in both sides, they plated the actual rear of the car, and they did everything with fresh metal and with actually lighter tubing than what I had. So now I have a safer and more secure and lighter parachute mount. It's just perfect. I and mean, they even nailed it. Like, I drilled that hole. And look at that. I mean, it's just perfect. Other than the little chip of paint that is for me, from the one bolt holding my parachute mount in when I would... Go to take the parachute out, you can see the paint chip. That was, that was my bad. One of the next things, let me see if you can see it. You see that like little rub mark in the paint? Okay. Well, the sill plates on my wing touch off on the quarter panel. So they were rubbing on the quarter panel itself and um, I didn't have crossbars to hold these in place. So all I had were these down bars that came straight down. So they went and they tied these into the sill plates on the side. So I can't, I got this locked out so that this stays off of the quarter panel and is more secure down track. They also took, I had just regular like these style cotter pins and like pull pins right here. And they replaced those with push button units. So when I go to pop the trunk, I don't have to struggle with these piles of trash anymore. I can just pop this out, trunk comes up and I'm good to go. So that was absolutely awesome. Shout out on that. So it's worth noting that what I've shown you so far would have been considered like the easy part of the job that they had. Not that it's easy, but that segment of what I needed done was the most straightforward. And, and I guess, again, not easy, but easiest for this in particular. So what they had to do that was more complicated was figure out how to flat bottom the inside of that car where we cut out the channels for the ladder bars, where we cut the rear bin section out. All of that stuff was just wide open and the angles are real funky and I wasn't sure how they were gonna knock it out. The first update picture I got, they slayed it. I mean, they, they added stuff to the car that I didn't consider. And when I came to pick it up in person, man. Also, it's worth noting, a lot of, um, I shouldn't say a lot of, there are a few content creators, whatever you wanna call people that put crappy videos on YouTube like me, uh, that they basically work with somebody under a partnership deal, right? They call a shop, they're like, hey, I got six followers and I want a bunch of free stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> they work together and they, they pump these shops up after the fact. And uh, that's why they, they promote or brag on them. This was not a partnership deal. This wasn't a sponsorship deal. I didn't get a discount on this deal. This is a straight up, I took my car to the shop I took it to Hargett because I knew that they did killer work and he could get me in. And that is why I took the car there. This is not me selling snake oil or me promoting somebody other than for the work that they can do. So that's it. That is why I went there. There's no BS involved here. Just as a heads up, seven up. Again, this presented some awkward angles and some weird stuff that they had to work around. You can see that flat panel they made that they dimple dyed. You can see the tunnels that they made on each side for the actual ladder bars to rise and shrink, basically. Uh, shrink's not the right word, but I'm not gonna do this voice over a, a million times. In the rear, you can see the strut towers. They capped, welded, ground smooth, so they look like a factory piece. They made the rear section that came up to the bins. You can see how they extended them up and they actually added crossbars to the cage for support in that respect as well. All right, let's approach this with the wide angle so you can kind of get more of a gist here. Again, you can see how much space they had to cover up. It was, it was not a small task. They tied everything into that factory cross member you can see. They added, let me see the bars. They added this bar, they added this crossbar, and then there's another crossbar on the other side that they added for strength, 
which is something, again, I didn't consider and they nailed it. They made these out of cardboard templates first and I was able to watch them assemble that stuff. They shot me images as they began and concluded fabrication. But you can see, I mean, they, there's, there's nothing missed. The underside of the car is the same way. And I'll try to get into there to show you some of those details as well. But from the inside, again, when we were talking about doing the car originally, I didn't have rear suspension in it. Like we pulled the IRS out. So these were just three holes. And Ryan had mentioned, he said, hey, why don't we cut this out, make an insert for it so that if you do get in an accident, God forbid, smoke and fire can't come through here. I didn't even consider that. And they knocked it out and killed it. Absolutely awesome. One of the things I'm going to do here is I'm just going to port in all of the pictures they sent me through the process. From the time I dropped the car off to the time I picked it up was a little less than four weeks. So in less than four weeks, they were able to take basically a, a shell of a car and turn it into what it is now. I apologize for the quality of the pictures. I saved them off a text message string and uh, they kind of got jacked up, but, but you can deal with it. You can see just every single piece is attention to detail and attention to detail and attention to detail. And having them have the foresight for a lot of the safety things was huge. A lot of the stuff I didn't even consider, boxing the cell in in certain areas and then making the mounts out of the tubing instead of just, I don't know, nut certs like I usually do. You can see the process with them forming the actual panels and then welding things up and getting them in place. You can see the templates that they made for the ladder bars. I mean, the whole thing was just start to finish awesome. And the end result underneath the chassis was ridiculous. Next up, I have to go back through, dismember, dismember all of the components and get the car ready for paint, keep the rust away, oxidation away. There's a few dozen other things that they did to this car that I just don't have in this video, but from top to bottom, from having the foresight on safety stuff to boxing things in to finish work, Spence and Ryan and the entire team at Hargett Automotive and Performance, thank you so much. I know it's not the most action-packed video in the world, but I had to make a specific return clip of this car for our channel because they, again, Hargett, they killed it. They absolutely murdered it, and they've made me uh, feel bad at my job at Dynasty. Their communication, the images, the invoicing structure, all of it was above and beyond. So it, it had flipped a switch in me to now, I need to work harder, I need to do better because they set the bar pretty damn high. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Hargett Automotive and Performance. Thank you to Spence for killing himself, getting this thing in. Ryan for bringing the car in. Tammy for communication. Everybody else under that roof, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much and thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Bye.